Starting us off, number 10 is Faulty Voting Machines. In season 20, episode 4, titled Treehouse of Horror, it was a time for federal elections. At the voting station, Homer was trying to vote for Obama on the voting machine, but it kept changing it to John McCain. Four years later, when Obama was running for his second term, a voting machine in Pennsylvania had to be removed because it was actually switching votes for Obama. If you ask me, it's absolutely terrifying to think that faulty coding can sway an election like that and impact millions of lives if it goes too far. I mean, did Donald Trump actually become the president or was it just a big mistake with a lot of faulty machines? Moving on to number nine, we have the self-awareness. So in the season four episode, Homer Heretic, Homer gets visited by God. At the end of the episode, Homer asks him what the meaning of life is. But just before God answers, the show ends and cuts to the credits. So what is it that God told Homer? Well, some people have theorized that God told Homer that he is just a cartoon. From that episode onwards, Homer is aware that whatever he does won't have lasting consequences. That's why he can just quit his job, go to space, and go on other wacky adventures. It's also why he's gotten badly injured but never dies. He knows he's untouchable and now he does whatever he wants. In our 8th spot, we have the controversy. The Simpsons are known for pushing their limits just to see how far they can go with their jokes. But one episode was very controversial and received a bunch of backlash. In the episode titled 30 Minutes Over Tokyo, the Simpsons visit Japan. While in Japan, they turn on the TV and watch a show called Battling Seizure Robots, in which then all of the characters drop down on the floor and have seizures. Well, this in fact was poking fun of the events that happened in 1997 with regards to a Pokemon episode. In December of 1997, an episode of Pokemon caused thousands of children to have seizures. As a result, they called this the Pokemon Shock Effect. A lot of these seizures happened at the same time, about 20 minutes into the episode during a sequence with red and blue rapid flashing lights. Some other children suffered from blurred vision, dizziness, and nausea, and then there's some kids that just passed right out. So Japan was very offended by The Simpsons doing this, and banned the episode from ever being aired. Number 7. Back in 1998, The Simpsons episode, Lard of the Dance, you can see Homer and Bart Simpson decided to recycle grease for money. Sold it all to the rendering plant. People buy grease? Oh yes, they use it to make products such as soap, cosmetics, baby food. Used grease is worth money? <gasps> and my arteries are clogged with yellow gold. So after Homer found out that the grease can be sold for money, he started his own operation. And I get my money from grease. What's the problem? Wow, look at that load of grease. Boy, if we're ever gonna earn paper money, we have to expand our operation. Well, this actually became reality years later. In fact, 15 years later, people were caught stealing grease from restaurants in order to make some money. Listen to this. Soaring gasoline prices spawn a new kind of bizarre crime, <laughs> the stealing of grease. As in restaurant grease. Is this real life right now? Who the heck is buying restaurant grease? Well, apparently you can actually use grease to run your car instead of gas. So with the gas prices going up in New York, people actually started stealing cooking grease. So just when you thought you've heard it all. The Simpsons predicted the Rolling Stones will be on tour in 2010 during a 1995 episode. At number six, we have everyone is a genius. We all see the Simpsons as a classic middle class family, filling all the roles that we are comfortable with. But what if they are actually the smartest family in the world. We already know that Lisa is so smart, it literally alienates her from the rest of the world, and she shows off her brilliance on several occasions. Every time Marge takes a break from raising a family, she excels at whatever she does. Even though Bart struggles in the confines of school, outside of that, he is extremely resourceful and has been shown to be an almost genius level criminal. Maggie is probably the smartest baby ever, and there's even an episode where Crayon is removed from Homer's brain and and it reveals that he is one of the smartest people in all of Springfield. Our halfway slot goes to a white tiger attack. Well, this one happened in season five, episode 10, titled Springfield. In this episode, a Simpsons universe duo called Gunter and Ernest, clearly meant to resemble Siegfried and Roy, if you guys remember those two, they were viciously attacked on one of their Vegas shows by a white tiger. Then 10 years later, Roy Horn of Siegfried and Roy actually was attacked by their white tiger at their show. Although injured, Roy luckily survived the attack. In our fourth spot, we have the real killer. In the Simpsons episode titled Who Shot Mr. Burns, Mr. Burns was found shot surrounded by a bunch of suspects. 
Now, if we look at who's all there, we can see Krusty the Clown. However, he doesn't look the same. In fact, some people have speculated that it was actually Homer who shot Burns in a Krusty the Clown disguise so that he wouldn't get caught. Moving on to number three, we have the sweatshops. The artist Banksy actually had the chance to create a gag on The Simpsons. However, his turned out undeniably dark. Basically, there's a scene where you can see malnourished and injured workers dressed in tattered clothes creating drawings for The Simpsons episodes. Then we see kids working in waste next to bones. There are also armed guards watching all the workers. Well, this too closely resembles the poor sweatshop workers who are basically forced to work in terrible conditions for less than a dollar an hour. It was a little too real for some people. Although The Simpsons claim it's just a gag and it's meant to be harmless, it's still triggered a lot of people. Boys Tiger Attack is up next to number two. We hate to see this next one. So that aired during the fifth season. Well, 10 years after that episode in 2003, this happened. October 3rd, 2003, Roy Horn near death and rushed into emergency surgery. So during the show, it was said that Roy was attacked by his own tiger, just like the Simpsons predicted. Well, there's actually an update on this story. Roy spoke about what happened 11 years after the tiger attack. Roy, who is German American, is a magician and entertainer, and he works with his partner, Siegfried. There are videos online of the tiger attack during one of his shows, but everything wasn't what it seemed. So Roy actually passed out on the ground and the tiger noticed Roy not moving. So the tiger grabbed Roy by his throat, like tigers do with their cubs, to try to help them. Well, you know what? Let's hear Roy himself tell the rest of the story. Well, yeah, he, he, he took care of me. He said, be a, my, my Adley is absolutely blessing because that's going to lead to blood pressure. How about you would be brain dead? You were saying, the doctor was saying that had Montecor not relieved the pressure, you would not have lived? So when everyone thought the tiger attacked Roy, the tiger actually saved his life. Doctors said that if it wasn't for the tiger relieving the pressure in his head, Roy would have been in a vegetable state. I mean, it's so crazy. So I guess the Simpsons, like, they sort of half predicted this one. And for the number one spot, we have Matt Groening was a friend of Jeffrey Epstein's. This is a tough pill to swallow. Now, if this is true, it doesn't mean that the show is dead to us and there isn't any hard evidence against him, but I'll tell you guys a story and then and then you can put the pieces together yourself and make your own call. Virginia Guffrey was one of the biggest voices that came out after Epstein was arrested. She claimed that Jeffrey Epstein was flying around to perform sexual favors from the time she was only 15. She told one story where she was flying on Jeffrey's private plane and Matt Groening, the creator of The Simpsons, was coming along with them. On the flight, Epstein suggested that Guffrey give Groening a foot massage, which she did. And before he got off the plane, Groening drew Virginia Guffrey a picture of Bart and then signed it. Now the Simpsons creator may have not known the girl's age and maybe never had a relationship with Epstein outside of this flight, but the whole thing makes the guy look super guilty and like he is a massive creep. Starting off this countdown, we have the immortal man. Homer Simpson is theorized to be immortal. Why is this? Because no matter what happens, he will always live on. He can never be killed. In several episodes, Homer has gotten into situations that should have severely harmed him or killed him. But this never happens. He can bleed, his bones break, but they will always heal. In fact, he's been around longer than we realize. In multiple episodes, we see a lot of Homer lookalikes from back in the day. Like we see a Homer lookalike with a beard present for the Ten Commandments. Maybe this is Homer himself and not just a lookalike, meaning he's been around for a very, very long time. In fact, he's older than Mr. Burns. In our ninth spot, we have the wallpaper. Okay, this one is kind of funny, I can't lie. So in the episode Lisa vs. Malibu Stacy, something hilariously disturbing happens. Lisa goes to Mr. Smithers to get help with a problem. While beside him, he starts up his computer. From there, we see a wallpaper image of Mr. Burns posing nude. Then a digital voice says, Hello Smithers, you're quite good at turning me on. There's dead silence while Lisa just stares at the screen. Then Smithers says, uh, you should probably ignore that. Okay, it's really funny, but also a bit creepy. It just shows how truly obsessed Smithers is with Mr. Burns. 
A lot of fans said that they were quite creeped out by this scene, especially because of the clear age difference between the two. At number eight, somehow The Simpsons predicted the Nobel Prize winner. Oh. We're watching the Nobel Prize announcements live from Stockholm. Oh, the Nobis! <laughs> For economics, Jagdish Bhagwati. Huzzah! I had him in the pool! Lucky. Milhouse is a pure genius and a psychic because he predicted the winner of the Nobel Prize back in 2010, which is six years before Holstrom actually won. Holstrom won the 2016 Nobel Prize in economics for work on contact theory and how to evaluate whether things should be government run or privately owned. It is in two ways because I think the, the, the first revolution occurred in 91 uh, when we had had almost 25 years of counterproductive policies, uh, which had before actually, that. before before 91. No. At number seven, we have a nuke hit Springfield. Let's say that the theory about the whole town being in purgatory is true. How did everyone in the town get there at the same time? Not only everyone in their town, but also everyone in Shelbyville as well as Springfield. Well, some people think that the area was a victim to a nuclear strike that vaporized everyone at the same time. They all saw a flash, thought it was a bad dream, and then they moved on with their lives, not knowing that they were all actually dead. And you know, for the town of Springfield, that wouldn't be that weird. One giant flash just just one time, crazy things go on there all the time. Our number six slot goes to autocorrect. I mean, this one isn't technically a disaster, but it definitely has led to some disastrous miscommunication. In Lisa's On Ice in season six, episode eight, students at Springfield are trying to make a note on their device to try to beat up Martin, but the device autocorrected to say, eat up Martha. It was making fun of Apple's Newton device, which came years before any sorts of, you know, sophisticated iPod touch or iPhone even entered the market. It apparently served as inspiration for technology from Apple to improve the keyboard. But that doesn't stop my autocorrect from changing words that I don't want to be changed and making me so ducking mad. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the nuclear accident. Ever wonder why all the people in Simpsons are yellow? Well, you can thank Homer for that. It's theorized that Homer Simpson made an error at work which caused the nuclear power plant to explode. However, it didn't kill anyone. Instead, everyone was exposed to highly toxic waste that caused them to mutate and turn yellow. It's also why they only have four fingers instead of five. I mean, Homer is quite careless at work, so it could just be that he's the reason why everyone looks the way that they do. Which makes me wonder, what did they look like before the explosion? In our fourth spot, we have the lawsuit. Another episode that received major backlash was season 13's Blame It On Lisa. In this episode, the Simpsons head to Brazil to help a child that Lisa is sponsoring over there. But Homer ends up being kidnapped and held for ransom. The entire episode paints Rio as a place full of crime, slums, and rat infestations. The tourist board of Rio was so outraged by the Simpsons' depiction of their city that they threatened to sue the show. Not only was the show full of negative stereotypes, but it also inaccurately depicted Brazilian culture. Eventually, the lawsuit was dropped after the Simpsons apologized. But still, they received a lot of hate from this controversial episode, and as a result, it's rarely ever aired. Now at number three, we have The Simpsons predicting Guitar Hero. Take a look at this picture right here. This was aired in 2002. You can see Mick Jagger and Keith Richards giving Homer Simpson a jacket that has Guitar Hero printed on the back of it. Three years after the episode aired, Guitar Hero actually came out. I don't know if the name of the game was inspired by The Simpsons, but it's pretty weird. What are you doing? Playing a Guitar Hero. So that was actually one of the advertisements for Guitar Hero. I remember when this game came out and it was so sick. I got kind of good at Guitar Hero, but then I stopped because I think I just got used to all the same songs. I never really produced more of it. And I don't even know if they still produce newer Guitar Heroes, like versions, or if they've released more songs into the game. At number two, we have Flanders burned down the Simpsons' home. In the episode, Homer the Heretic, Homer has a change of faith. He no longer wants to go to church, which leads him to staying home on Sunday to smoke fat stogies and get wasted to the point where he passes out. Well, something that you should all know is don't fall asleep with a lit cigarette or cigar because you can burn your house down. The Simpsons' home goes up in flames. And who is there to save Homer when he's asleep while the house is burning? Well, it's the most heroic churchgoer of all time, Ned. But wait a minute, Ned is probably the most religious man in all of Springfield. Why was he not at church? He was also the one who was pushing Homer to go back to church. It could have been Ned 
Ned who lit the house on fire and then saved Homer so he could both look like a hero and convince the town if you're not gonna go to church it will unleash the wrath of God. This way he could live in a town that is controlled by the church. And finally, closing us off in at number one, uh, we gotta do it. We're talking about the virus. Did The Simpsons actually predict the craziness going on right now? Well, yeah. Let's go back to season four, which was years ago, episode 21, Marge in Chains. Well, The Simpsons predicted the very pandemic that we're dealing with today. Well, kind of. Well, I'll let you guys be the judge of this one. Part of the plot of this episode is a factory worker in Japan coughing into boxes after explaining that he has the flu. The box then gets shipped to Springfield where the flu is released and ultimately infects many of the characters. The flu in this episode has no known cure and in one of the scenes a doctor even says that the best thing to do is to rest and any medicine that they would give would only be a placebo like no medications will work. Sound pretty familiar or what? Well there is a series of images circulating around right now on the internet one of which shows a newscast with the words coronavirus behind him. However, the specific image was actually altered. It's not a real image, I'm pretty sure. The original didn't say anything about corona. If it did, that would be absolutely insane. Regardless, there are still way too many key similarities that are just a bit too close for comfort for this one. Starting off this countdown, we have the writer's room. So with a show like Simpsons, you could only imagine what the writer's room might look like. I don't know about you, but I imagined it would be a good time, filled with like people yelling out hilarious, outrageous ideas. Well, turns out that this isn't the case. In fact, the writer's room was often very tense. In particular, there was ongoing tension between Sam Simon and Matt Groening. In fact, they were constantly feuding. Eventually, Simon left The Simpsons after claiming that he was miserable. Apparently, he never got enough credit for the show and was underpaid. Alright, number 9, The Simpsons predicted Toys R Us shutting down. It was actually pretty funny in how they showed that Toys R Us was shutting down. All they did was they went up a ladder and they turned the R around and then it, it, that, that means it shut down. Why don't you all fade away? Yeah, that was my reaction when I heard Toys R Us were shutting down. I was pretty sad about it. But for some reason, Toys R Us here in Canada, they're still around. So I did a little bit of research. Toys R Us has been around for over 70 years since the 40s, which sucks because it's technology, it's our lazy generation that is getting these big companies like this to shut down. People can just order on Amazon and online. I actually miss Blockbusters where you can actually go into the store, you can check out the new releases, and you can rent them. But now I just sit in front of Netflix all day trying to pick what I want to watch. Going back to Toys R Us, the company's North American Operations filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy production back in 2017. In 2018, they added their British operations into that as well. Earlier on this year, they announced that Toys R Us will be shutting down all of its US and British stores. I think by now most of them have been shut down. And for up here in Canada, well, we'll see what happens. In our eighth spot, we have Homer the Clown. So I did mention this theory in my video, Top 10 Scary Simpsons Secrets. If you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you check it out as well. So on The Simpsons, Krusty the Clown is shown to be a pretty outrageous character that is worshipped by Bart. But have you noticed that Homer and Krusty share very similar features? I mean, if Homer wore some makeup and wore a red nose and had some teal hair, he would look just like Krusty. Well, this theory goes that Krusty is actually Homer's secret identity. Now, Krusty is seen to have some very bad habits. He's constantly smoking and drinking and is shown to be very depressed. So if Krusty was indeed Homer this whole time, does that mean that Homer would have been hiding these qualities from his family? Sad to think about it, but Homer might just dress up as Krusty and drink his sorrows away. Fun fact, Matt Groening actually came forward and said that he originally designed both the characters to look similar because he wanted to originally reveal that Krusty was Homer's persona. But it hasn't happened. Yet. Alright, coming in at number 7 is Horsemeat for Sale. The episode Sweet Seymour Skinner Badass Song, Season 5, Episode 19, had lunch lady Doris using different types of horsemeat to make lunch for all of Springfield's elementary school. Well, years later, 2003, Ireland's Food Safety Authority found horse DNA in a bunch of samples of beef patty. I mean, people usually make their own burgers because they actually want to know what's in it. They're trying not to play Russian roulette with whether or not you're eating horse meat. And uh, wasn't there horse meat found at Ikea? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a thing, Ikea. Making our way down the list number six, we have the clapback. 
Believe it or not, but the Simpsons were once feuding with the US President George Bush. It started when President Bush blamed the Simpsons for society's problems and economy. He even went on television and said that families should be more like the Waltons and not like the Simpsons. Basically, he believed that The Simpsons had something to do with the recession at the time. Apparently, the series is geared towards more liberal audiences, and that the liberals were at fault for the recession. And since The Simpsons promoted liberal ideologies, and their show was huge at the time, it's their fault. In fact, in the 1996 episode Two Bad Neighbors, Bush appeared as a character on The Simpsons, but he was voiced by Harry Shearer. In the episode, Bush is a grouchy new neighbor. At number five, we have The Simpsons are actually super rich. Now the show is a cartoon that has been on almost longer than any other show. I know we're not counting like soap operas and stuff. I mean, it's very hard to dunk on days of your lives, but when a show has been on for that long, you gotta find crazier and crazier plots to keep the show interesting. But if the show was rooted in reality, how do The Simpsons buy everything and do everything and travel as much as they do? Well, I don't know if you guys remember The Simpsons character who is basically a billionaire supervillain Hank Scorpio, but he ended up giving Homer the Denver Broncos. Homer owns that team, so if that's true, that would be enough capital for them to do whatever they want, whenever they want. They would literally be billionaires. Number four, The Simpsons predicted FaceTime years before FaceTime was even a thing. Take a look at this picture right here. This was from the Lisa's Wedding episode on The Simpsons that aired back in 1995. This was 12 years before the iPhones or smartphones even came out. The Simpsons predicted that one day people will be able to communicate through a video on their phones. Marge Simpson is seen here in a video on one of those really old phones. You know the phones that you had to put your fingers in the hole, you gotta turn it around and dial. I don't really know how it works. I've seen it in a museum one time and I remember seeing it at my grandma's house. Skype didn't even come out to 2003. So having a video call with someone was just unheard of. It was very futuristic. The Simpsons are for sure well ahead of their time. They know exactly what's happening and when. Moving on to number three, we have the town killer. So let's take a look at the 2007 Simpsons movie. In this movie, the whole town of Springfield gets trapped inside of a dome as a result of some toxic pig waste that Homer dumped into the town's river. Homer and his family manage to escape while Springfield is destined to be blown up, killing all the residents. Now at the end of the movie, Homer is the hero and saves everyone. Or did he? This theory goes that Homer made his way back to Springfield from Alaska to save his wife and kids. But when he reached there, the town was already blown up and his family and friends were all killed. He then went back to Alaska where he still currently lives, isolated in a cabin. All the events we see are from Homer's imagination. He imagines that he is still back in Springfield living with his family. Coming to number two is The God Particle. I'm talking about season 10, episode two, The Wizard of Evergreen Terrace. Homer decides to become an inventor. In one scene, he is standing in front of a super complicated equation on a chalkboard. Well, as it turns out, well, this equation accurately predicted the mass of the Higgs boson particle or the God Particle before it was even discovered. I know this one isn't technically a disaster, but it's absolutely crazy to me that the Simpsons predicted the particle that explains how everything in the universe exists and where it all came from. And in our number one spot, we have Mr. Burns' age. Okay, you're not gonna believe how old he truly is. But before I say his age, let me know in the comments below what you think his age is. Okay, did you type your guess? No cheating. You ready? He is apparently 104 years old. Yeah, I know, he doesn't seem a day over 30. So in the episodes, Who Shot Mr. Burns Part 1, Homer, The Smithers, and Hunka Hunka Burns in Love, he is mentioned to be 104. His mom is said to be 122 years old, but he may in fact be even older than that. In one episode, he said that his age is four digits. This was confirmed when he said that his ATM password is his age. And guess what? His password was four digits long. So this man is terrifyingly old. In fact, some people say he's immortal. Taking any longer, let's get into this list. At number 10, we have the show can predict the future. I'm gonna start off with the most popular Simpsons theories. I figure we all already talk about this one, so it would be a great place to start. Through the long running series of The Simpsons, there has been some episodes that have actually called out what's going to happen in real life before it has actually happened. I did a detailed explanation on this on our other channel, Life's Biggest Questions, in the video, How Did The Simpsons Predict the Future? Now, no matter 
what you think about this theory, you have to admit that some of these things are very interesting, like the ending of Game of Thrones, they predicted that, as well as Donald Trump becoming president, and even the coronavirus. I wonder if they have a vault of unused Simpsons episodes that have predicted other outcomes into the future. These guys are like precogs in Minority Report. Moving on to number nine, we have the self-awareness. So in the season four episode, Homer Heretic, Homer gets visited by God. At the end of the episode, Homer asks him what the meaning of life is. But just before God answers, the show ends and cuts to the credits. So what is it that God told Homer? Well, some people have theorized that God told Homer that he is just a cartoon. From that episode onwards, Homer is aware that whatever he does won't have lasting consequences. That's why he can just quit his job, go to space, and go on other wacky adventures. It's also why he's gotten badly injured but never dies. He knows he's untouchable and now he does whatever he wants. In at number 8 is The Three Eyed Fish in season 2 episode 4 titled Two Cards in Every Garage and Three Eyes on Every Fish. Bart went fishing into the river right next to the power plant and he actually ended up catching a fish with three eyes. Well over 10 years later a three eyed fish actually was caught in a river that was fed by a nuclear power plant. I feel like this episode serves as a really big warning to dangers of pollution. I wonder what other sorts of mutated creatures are walking and swimming around. In our seventh spot, we have the alcohol addiction. It's no secret that Homer loves his beer. Maybe not as much as Barney, but we still have seen him get drunk on multiple occasions and he guzzles down a lot of beer. Well, people believe that Homer is an alcoholic struggling to get his addiction in check. They think that behind Homer's goofy facade is a very erratic and depressed man who always needs to drink or to be drunk. Although the show may not show it, Homer may just be intoxicated 24-7, and that's why he acts the way that he does. In fact, over the course of the show, Homer has said things like, ah, beer, my one weakness, or all right, brain, you don't like me and I don't like you, but let's just do this and I can get back to killing you with beer. It just highlights how reliant Homer is on his beer. This bold prediction that came true is at number six. During the episode titled The Lisa's Wedding, there was also a scene where she was lying in bed and beside her was the Rolling Stones poster. And on the poster it said, Steel Wheelchair Tour 2010. We're both studying the environment, we're both utterly humorless about our vegetarianism, and we both love the Rolling Stones. Yes, not for their music, but for their tireless efforts to preserve historic buildings. Okay, did you guys see it? The Rolling Stones have had an incredible run. They've been touring since 1962. They are actually still touring today. Right now, they're on their no-filter tour. There doesn't seem to be any slowing down, despite their age. During the 2010 episode, it looked like they were done touring after their successful Bigger Bang tour. At the time, it was the highest grossing tour of all time, earning over $550 million. And just when it seemed like the Rolling Stones, well, they might have been done touring, they toured again five years later, just like The Simpsons predicted. The legendary Mick Jagger is 75 years old, and he's still rocking out. And his concert tour will end next year, in June. The drummer for the Rolling Stones, Charles Robert Watts, is 77 years old, and he's still beating the drum. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the band episodes. I mean, I wasn't shocked when I found out that there are several banned episodes of The Simpsons. Like, you probably could have sensed this one coming, since The Simpsons often push the limits. Obviously, the show is gonna end up offending someone. One of the episodes that was banned from air was one where Homer gets a prescription for medical marijuana, which he then gets addicted to. Well, Fox was not too thrilled with this episode. They said that it glorifies drug use. As a result, they had to recut this episode and focus less on his drug use. But the UK just banned the episode altogether. Another banned episode is the one titled Cartridge Family. Basically, it shows Homer owning a gun and then abusing it. In one scene, he points the gun at Marge's face. In another scene, Bart does the same but with Milhouse as they play. The British channel Sky One completely banned this episode from airing, saying that it promotes gun use and violence. And number four, we have the Mole Man clones. Mole Man might be my favorite character in the whole show. He's just an old dude who is constantly used as a punchline. And by punchline, I mean they will have some sort of physical abuse happen to him. Everything from getting hit in the nuts to getting run off the road. Really, is there anything funnier than an old man getting hit 
in the nuts. You can try to look for hours. I don't think you'll find anything. But how can this weak old man take so much punishment and come right back up on his feet like he's in a Rocky movie? Well, some people say it's because it's not the same old guy every time. It's actually a bunch of clones that might have an underground layer and only send out clones to the surface when they need supplies. They do this to keep their secret safe and because they are afraid of the world because it is a very hostile place for them. It seems like it's always trying to kill them so they would have a very good reason to be afraid. And number three, we have Mr. Burns wants the power plant to fail. Homer has made so many mistakes he should no longer be employed at the power plant. It doesn't make any sense that he has not been fired yet. Well, there is a simple reason to this, that Mr. Burns wants the power plant to melt down. The theory is that Mr. Burns has been betting on the power plant failing by taking out a ton of insurance claims on the buildings in Springfield, as well as the power plant. So if that thing goes boom, then Mr. Burns will make millions, if not billions of dollars. Tick number three slot is one that's honestly insane to me. In the Simpsons movie, Marge threatens to expose the government's secrets. I wonder what secrets they have. Well, she's brought into a room that is filled with computer monitors and government officials listening in on private phone calls, trying to find incriminating statements or evidence against members of the public. Well, six years later, Edward revealed to the public in a huge scandal that the NSA actually is listening in and spying on us. I mean, how did the Simpsons know? This breach in privacy and security was absolutely huge, and honestly, it still kind of scares me, the control that the government has. Moving on to number two, we have the murderer. Now, we know that Homer has done some questionable things, like he continuously chokes out his son Bart, but he wouldn't actually harm him or others, right? Well, turns out Homer has a darker mind than we thought. In the episode titled, Papa Don't Leech, Homer and his father Abe are driving home when they go off the road and over a cliff. Homer escapes, but his father is still stuck in the car. That's when he decides to suffocate his dad to death. He looks him right in the eyes, places his hand on his face until he just knocks out. Then, turns out it was all just a dream. But Homer says, I was having the most wonderful dream. Okay there. Basically, the Simpsons writers implied that Homer wants his father dead, and may even want to be the one who does the deed. Homer definitely still holds grudges against his father from his childhood. Enough so that he wants him dead. Finally, number one, we have the donut shaped universe theory. How the heck did The Simpsons predict this one? Imagine they also predict the flat earth theory as well. I mean, maybe they have. Your theory of a donut shaped universe is intriguing, Homer. I may have to steal it. Wow, I can't believe someone I never heard of is hanging out with a guy like me. So it was Homer Simpson that came up with the donut-shaped Earth theory. And you know what, it was amazing seeing Stephen Hawking making another appearance on The Simpsons. He has made so many of them. I'd say, my IQ is 199 for crying out loud. 198, 197. Big deal, my IQ is 280. <gasps> Stephen Hawking! us off at number 10, we have when The Simpsons predicted that Canada would legalize weed. So this prediction came from a 2005 episode during its 16th season on The Simpsons, where the Canadian version of Flanders offered weed to the American version. Watch. Well, circle cut my bacon. Look at all these Yankee doodly dandies. Is there another Vietnam going on? Hello, neighborini. Say, would you like to puff on a reeferino? It's legal here. They warned me Satan would be attractive. Back in 2005, it seemed very unlikely that a country would legalize such a drug. Uruguay was actually the first country in the world to legalize the sale of cannabis for recreational use, and that wasn't until 2003. Canada became only the second country to follow Uruguay to legalize weed. So back in 2005, that was a very bold accusation by the Simpsons to make. And I was doing some research to see if any other countries legalize weed, and I was reading about Netherlands, and it was pretty it was a pretty interesting read and tell me if I'm wrong well apparently cannabis in the Netherlands it's actually illegal although we all believe that it was legal recreational consumption of the drug is tolerated I mean you can buy some at coffee shops it just seems like in the Netherlands so many people smoke weed that cops they just don't have the manpower to arrest everyone and they usually don't arrest people anymore as long as you have just a little bit of it something like five grams but if police officers want they can confiscate 
investigate it. I'm not sure if you would get ticketed. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't get arrested. Number nine, we have Marge shot Mr. Burns. One of the best episodes in Simpsons history is the one that presents the mystery of who shot Mr. Burns. There was so much goodness in that episode, they had to pack it into a two parter. Now, when everything is said and done, every stone has been turned over and there's no more suspects. It seems that the little baby Maggie was the one who shot Mr. Burns. Now, even though this is how the episode unfolds, fans have done some digging and found clues that suggest that maybe Marge was the one who fired the bullet into the old billionaire. When Burns wakes up, he is terrified of Maggie, but who is holding her? It's Marge. But then if it was Marge, why doesn't he sell her down the river? Well, if you pay close attention to the show, you will see several points where it reveals that Mr. Burns is actually in love with Marge. After he gathers himself, he puts the blame on the little baby in blue because he was confident that no one was going to throw a baby in jail and his secret love would still be safe. In our eighth spot, we have the controversy. The Simpsons are known for pushing their limits, just to see how far they can go with their jokes. But one episode was very controversial and received a bunch of backlash. In the episode titled 30 Minutes Over Tokyo, the Simpsons visit Japan. While in Japan, they turn on the TV and watch a show called Battling Seizure Robots, in which then all of the characters drop down on the floor and have seizures. Well, this in fact was poking fun of the events that happened in 1997 with regards to a Pokemon episode. In December of 1997, an episode of Pokemon caused thousands of children to have seizures. As a result, they called this the Pokemon Shock Effect. A lot of these seizures happened at the same time, about 20 minutes into the episode during a sequence with red and blue rapid flashing lights. Some other children suffered from blurred vision, dizziness, and nausea, and then there's some kids that just passed right out. So Japan was very offended by The Simpsons doing this, and banned the episode from ever being aired. In our seventh spot, we have the shots at Congress. Season 6 showrunner of The Simpsons, David Merkin, was in a constant battle with Congress. As a result, he purposely made the Treehouse of Horror episodes extra disturbing as a way to rebel against them, since they always attempted to censor the show. That's why some of the episodes are more violent than others. For example, in one episode, groundskeeper Willie gets a fatal axe to the back by Homer, and eventually the same fate happens to Maggie and Principal Skinner in later episodes. He just kept challenging Congress and he received a lot of pushback for doing so. In fact, he even pitched an idea where in the show a Fox censor gets stabbed to death by a dagger. This was to get back at the network censors as well. Obviously, this idea was never allowed. When I say the word genius in relation to The Simpsons, people would often associate it with Lisa Simpson. But what if I told you that she comes from a family of geniuses? That's right, Homer may appear to be dim-witted, but in fact, it's theorized that he is actually a genius. Theory goes that all of The Simpsons are super smart, but only Lisa chooses to embrace it. In fact, in the episode HOMR, Homer becomes a genius after having a crayon removed from his brain. So this whole time he was super smart, but the crayon that was lodged in his brain was limiting his potential. However, he ended up reinserting the crayon into his brain at the end of the episode. In fact, there is evidence of Homer being clever despite having the crayon in his brain. In certain episodes, he has built a time machine, nuclear weapons, and even an advanced AI robot. So yeah, it may not seem like it, but Homer's a genius. The three-eyed fish prediction that came true is next up at number five. Well, this is my day and we do, sir. <laughs> All right, we eat tonight. <laughs> Wait a minute. So that was one of the earliest episodes. That was episode 17 during season two, and it was when Bart caught a three-eyed fish. Little did we know that years later, it would become reality. 21 years after the episode aired, a fisherman in Argentina caught a three-eyed wolf fish. Here's a picture of it. It was caught in a reservoir near a local nuclear power plant. So that explains a bit. The fisherman caught the fish in the dark and didn't realize its third eye until he looked at the fish with the flashlight and he was totally shocked. He thought he caught a rare specimen but it was just a fish that was affected by the exposure to the water from the nuclear power plant. So this fish, it like totally mutated. I don't know if it was like evolving. 
And you know what? The Simpsons called it. Even in this episode, you can see the power plant. And this made headline news in Springfield, just like it made headline news in real life. Next up, number four is The Gory Billboard. Season four, episode six, titled Itchy and Scratchy, the movie shows a billboard for a movie obviously called Itchy and Scratchy that sends Scratchy's blood shooting into cars that are just driving by. Over 15 years later, 2008, a billboard for Kill Bill Volume 1 did the exact same thing, splattering a parking lot and all of the cars in it with bright red blood. I really hope that stuff washed off easily because I think I'd be really upset if I found my car had fake blood all over it. I mean, real blood or fake blood, I still have to clean that stuff up. Number three, we have Mr. Burns wants the power plant to fail. Homer has made so many mistakes he should no longer be employed at the power plant. It doesn't make any sense that he has not been fired yet. Well, there is a simple reason to this, that Mr. Burns wants the power plant to melt down. The theory is that Mr. Burns has been betting on the power plant failing by taking out a ton of insurance claims on the buildings in Springfield, as well as the power plant. So if that thing goes boom, then Mr. Burns will make millions, if not billions of dollars. Coming in at number two, we have the lost episode. Apparently, there's a super creepy lost episode out there that Matt Groening and the Simpsons team refuse to talk about. So, story goes that the production team went to great lengths to hide the existence of this episode that was apparently created by Matt Groening. However, it's said that Matt was acting strange when he created this episode. If you ever mention this episode to him, then apparently he gets very angry and forbids you from ever mentioning it. In this episode, Bart dies in a plane accident. The tragedy tears apart the Simpsons family. As a result, there are a bunch of disturbing crying scenes, and also tons of times where Bart's scarily realistic rotting corpse is seen. They call this lost episode, Dead Bart. With no proof of this episode, it is deemed as an urban legend. But maybe one day this lost episode will resurface. And in our number one spot, we have the coma. This theory makes so much sense that it's actually pretty crazy. So in the 1993 episode titled So It's Come To This, a Simpsons clip show, Homer gets crushed by a vending machine and falls into a coma. Eventually he wakes up from the coma at the end of the episode, but this theory states that he might never have woken up, and he's currently still in a coma, imagining everything that we see. First off, they claim that after this episode, there was a huge shift in the tone of the show. The show went from focusing on Homer and Marge's marital problems and like Bart cheating in school to Homer going to space or Homer working for a supervillain. The episodes have gotten more extreme and it could be because Homer is just in a coma imagining it all. There's also one more piece of evidence to support this theory. In the episode titled Homer the Heretic, as I mentioned before, Homer gets visited by God. Before the end of the episode, Homer asks him what is the meaning of life. God replies with, you'll find out when you die. Homer says, I can't wait that long. Then God says, you can't wait six months? Now the episode that Homer is in a coma aired six months after that episode, proving that this theory is quite possible. And that's all for today's video. Let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments for my video, Top 10 Scary Mickey Mouse Theories. A person who can commented, imagine him as a real person. Ooh, Mickey would be really scary as a real person.